MC Lucky Time Explosion! Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. Oh, thank the Lord. How you doing? I'm praying to Zeus every day. Nice. I had a good ride to here today. Mm. And I discovered one of my favorite artwork genres in the city. And what is the, that? The real art of New York City. Which is the stickers on delivery guys. Like tails, you know, on the end of their bikes, the mud flaps. Oh my! I've been I've been kind of obsessed with these lately, and today I saw like a rare one. And what constitutes a rare one to me is uh, anything that's not Catholic imagery or Goku. I see. I see. I guess they're both closely related, yeah. Goku and <laughs> and Christians. Yeah. Well, you're, um, there's a huge thing <laughs> recently in the news where they were claiming that there was a bunch of like um, cartel crime took a nosedive when the creator of Dragon Ball Z died. Wow. Everybody was like observing a memorial. <laughs> Check that out. I don't know how true that is. No. But I, I thought I would take a few pictures uh, on the way here. All this footage and photos were just taken on my way to work. I love New York for this reason. So we got a few different ones here. We got like a rare patriotic Punisher dude fitting right in, really trying to, uh, <laughs> to assimilate. I'm kind of shocked that local. you didn't see any uh, Tasmanian devils. You know, I think Shocked. that was the 90s. I think the Tasmanian Devil craze is kind of uh, hit its peak, unfortunately, 95. Nice, and Calvin pissing on stuff. <laughs> you still see that. And then there's these little babies in the hat. You ever see these little baby? They freak me out. They do kind of freak me out. They're like, um, what's that, like special moments? Uh, right, curio? right, right. There used to be a comic called Love Is. Yeah, and, and similar. Uh, similar. That's fine. Cartoon character. But we got a great show for you today. We have some art world controversy we're going to get into involving potential animal abuse. Oh, no. I know it's not good, uh, but it's okay. So there's the news. Stay tuned for that. There's uh, a silver lining at the end of the story. There is always a silver lining of a story. We're serious about this. But people are talking about um, an artist going on. But before that, we have a commercial break. A little word from our sponsor. Uh, today's episode is sponsored by Sola Studio, where we are recording today, and where me and Morgan both work. That's Full disclosure. Right. Uh, we are an amazing print shop. Uh, we do everything from framing, fine art installation, uh, consultation, websites, business cards, you name it, we got it. And we have a really special program for artists where uh, they pay into a membership, but all that money that they pay in accrues into an account for them. So any money you don't use at the end of the month rolls over, and you've got a nice little purse of credit to use for your professional services when you need it. You need a flyer, you need some prints for a show, you need some help hanging your show, uh, or even just doing an email blast or reworking your website, we got you. Check out the artist program if you're an artist. And if you are a client who needs regular commercial printing or regular fine art printing, hit us up. All right, back to the show. <laughs> so this controversy that we're talking about today, uh, it comes from uh, the Museo. Uh, in it's a museum uh, in Mexico, I believe, mm. uh, Mexico City, and there's a piece from an artist named Nina Bier called Tragedy, mm. and this this piece Tragedy includes the use of live animals, which is a very controversial thing in the arts. Uh, I don't know if you remember this, but there was a gallery down here on Orchard Street who had this show where they had basically created like a rat maze, right? And then they it was like a clear crystal covering on the floor and underneath this like rat maze all these little compartments with live rats and mice in them and you would like walk on top of them uh and then there was like a huge like PETA protest group outside because they're like you know this is terrifying for the rats to be of like course, walked yeah. on on top of and they're freaked out and this is like abusive and that actually even though I thought it was kind of interesting and kind of cool that I saw more of a point uh, in being upset about because it's like that's got to be a little traumatizing to the rats. Yeah, like I feel a connection on. between me and the rats in that maze. Right, but this piece, uh, Tragedy, that everyone's upset about uh, has like maybe seven or eight dogs in it, and it's just a stack of like Persian rugs. And then here's a picture of it. So these Persian rugs, and it's got all these different dogs who look like you know people's pets. There's like a corgi in there. Aww. There's like a golden retriever in there. 
and they're just kind of laying on these rugs. That sounds nice. Yeah, it looks kind of relaxing, to be honest. I want to lay on a Persian rug all day. Right. So the trainer is like hidden in the in the crowd uh, and is like giving them cues to like stay laying down during, you know, the gallery viewing hours or whatever. So I don't really I don't know, man. It's like people are like, we're getting soft these days. And it made me think of the last dog controversy in, from like the early 2000s, I think. Do you remember um, a guy named Guillermo Vargas? I don't. Hit me with this story because I'm getting all freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> so this was like way worse and really interesting. Uh, Guillermo Vargas was making an art piece. And I've heard it was in response to the killing of a homeless man on camera from the police in Nicaragua but also heard that it was in response to the stray dogs that are there. There's so many stray dogs There's just running lot. around. So he's a Costa Rican artist. This was at the Nicaraguan Biennale. And I mean, you guys might remember this as years and years ago, though. Some of you might not have even been born yet. I'm old. But uh, basically, he Me tied too. this dog to, to a tree, to a tree. He took a dog from the streets and he tied it on the gallery wall. Uh, and it was like a street dog, so it looked pretty emaciated and kind of grungy. Uh, and then he wrote in dog food on the other side of it, you are what you read in Spanish. And then proceeded to perpetrate a myth. This is my understanding of it anyway. You know, you can never tell what's real these days. But he proceeded to perpetrate a myth that he tied this dog up to the gallery wall specifically to like let it die and starve in front of all the patrons. And none of the patrons did a damn thing about it. Gasp. And there was a big article circulating around, like a kind of like a change.org petition or something. And they were saying that they're going to like ban him from the BNL and basically just, you know, get just say, shut this down. This is really cruel. And of course it would be cruel if it were real. So my understanding of it is that it was a street dog that he like rescued for a few hours fed and you know personally fed and led away massaged yeah massaged you know so it said it was a good boy maybe got bit by i don't know mm. but he um but he took this dog and took care of it for a while put it in the gallery for like three hours perpetrated this myth started this petition himself which got like way more views and attention to the bnl and to his art than uh <laughs> than anything in the bnl could have reached and actually got he actually won that year. So he got the, awarded the biggest prize. And it was kind of like this meta messing with people online sort of thing. Genius. And, you know, back when I was a young buck, fresh off the boat, off the bus here in New York, uh, I actually made a reference to this on my first solo show. I didn't know what to do. You know, I was like, I was being one of those performative artists. You know how artists are. Of course. They're like, I got to perform. I got to do something shocking and crazy. So for my first solo show, I decided to chain myself naked to the wall and live paint for the three hours of the reception. Here's a picture of that. I'm so sorry, Mom. How did it go? How was the experience? It was actually really funny because it and went pretty long, well. How long were you locked the chain to the wall for? Three hours. Holy same shit. As the, same as the Vargas dog. I had like a big bottle of whiskey and some paints, and I was working on a painting of a dog. For a friend. Were you on all fours? Or I was standing? sitting on my butt on the gallery, just Got on the it. cold concrete of this gallery. Ooh. Now, the funny thing is this gallery at the time, I don't know if any of you might remember Orchard Windows Gallery run by Dino Eli, but he is a very funny character. Uh, that gallery was like a weird little hub. I met actually a few pretty amazing people there, including Jamie Martinez, uh, who now runs his own space in Brooklyn. Nice. But Dino was really funny, and I think he liked me a little bit like, you know, liked me. He was like, you're going to do what? He goes, I can't go in there then. I don't, I can't control myself. Oh man, that <laughs> would have really added come to in. the installation. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I know if I was getting like assaulted by the, the gallery director, that would definitely be a story, I guess. Oh, yeah. He loved controversy too, because uh, if you look up Dino Eli and Orchard Windows, what you're going to find is this one news clip. I hope you can find it because it's super funny. Uh, he's basically getting attacked by the parents of the school across the street for showing like kind of illicit, like it was like they're beautiful oil paintings, but they were made from like hardcore pornography stills. Uh, and he was in trouble with the parents because he wouldn't shut his gate when the school was getting out. You know, he just left it open there. Uh, no, you know, I think they tried to call the cops. They couldn't really do anything about it. So the news came instead 
And Dino, so hungry for attention, instead of looking at this like, oh, no, this is bad press, he was just so happy that the press were there. Of course. He's literally jumping off the curb in the news clip going, woo! <laughs> like, I right, win! It, it, it's such a funny cut, too, because it cut, talks to him like one angry parent who's like, you know, and he's not closing the gate like he said he would. He's actually out here celebrating. And then it cuts straight to him jumping off the curb and being like, woo! Because the news is there. Right, right. But yeah, that was one of my first foyers into the art scene in New York. And uh, I actually saw a lot of characters that I keep seeing uh, all over the place today. Uh, but Also in the news, yeah. uh, I wanted to bring this up, uh, talk about it a little bit. Um, what do you think about Skibbity Biden? Skibbity Biden! Skibbity, skibbity, Hitler talk, Hitler talk, <laughs> Biden, <laughs> skibbity, skibbity. He goes, Trump is using Hitler's, Hitler's language. Talk. Hitler's language. So, so, so yeah, it's blowing been, up the internet right people now. People have been losing their shit, but like, you yeah. know, I, you showed me Skibbity Toilet, the original Did Skibbity I? Toilet. I was the one who turned you on. I am 45 years old in October, <laughs> oh, and congrats. I never Happy really birthday. knew. <laughs> I never knew about this Skibbity, and of course, you know, I just from seeing the first one, it didn't really make much sense to me. It's a head popping in uh -huh. and out of a toilet bowl saying Skibbity, Skibbity. G mod. Um, and then it turned into a whole like 70 part. Thing where it turned into wars between skibbities and what? It's the toilet, the skibbity toilet guys, and then the um, the speaker men. They're like giant speakers on their head. Got it. Yeah. And so like what's the, the story about? So like it's just a it's just a story of a battle, an epic <clears throat> battle with epic champions. And there's some weird social commentary kind of lurking under the surface there. I think about media, but I I think it it's just a it's a weird 17 part meme. Really? And kids, it just, for some reason, though, it really latched on to the youth. Like, kids love it. And I don't know why exactly, but I was playing um, Population And this is, popu one. is this popular here in the States or everywhere, Skibbity? I don't know. I can only speak to the States as an American. I can, right. only, I can only say what right. I know is really popular here. I imagine it's a global phenomenon. Right. But, um, and it's it, millions of kids know it. Like, it, tons. Well, the other day, I was playing Pop 1, which is a VR, like, Battle Royale game. And you shoot a bunch of people and try to like the, the circle gets smaller. Right. And there was a kid in there in our in our team who just was like who kept going like skibbity 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 oh skibbity skibbity pop pop pop. And I was like, oh my god, the kids are infected with the skibbity. So yeah, yeah everyone's losing weird. their shit about the Biden thing. Yeah. So why why do you think this is happening? I I really have I love no it. clue. I don't I know. I thought it's just absolutely hysterical. It is um, hysterical, but the reason they're losing their shit over it, I think, is uh, I mean, it's being called the nine eleven of television. First of all, let's just show it quickly. Yeah. Here's let's a just skibbity show. Biden. It's only a few seconds long, and this, why it's from causing the Colbert so report. much terror? I don't know, but here it is. Skibbity Biden. Biden. My God! <laughs> I think that's probably about as long as that is. Anyways, okay. So why why are the people losing their shit over this? Well, people are. <laughs> I don't know exactly where the meme of it calling it the 9/11 of television happened. Right. But I think the big gist is my understanding is like internet culture uh, is very much like terminally online and at odds with traditional media. So anytime you see something from the internet, from internet culture like Skibbity Toilet, make its way into the mainstream, you always have these deriders and people who are like, oh, the world is over. Just to give some this context. This is now popular. Though, on, this is on Colbert. This is on TV. The part How? of this sketch, the reason that it, it was on air is the joke was that Biden's team was looking for a new meme manager and then they found one and this is like what they said was created by yeah. their their new meme uh, right. control unit. But anyways, yes. The irony that, here, the irony here is that the, the sketch on Colbert was about outdated memes, right? It was trying to say like, like Biden would not be hip and up with it. He would use some old, outdated memes. Which I, I think guess, they might have underestimated how alive Skibbity Toilet still is. I guess is. so. So how old is Skibbity? I actually don't know when Skibbity Toilet came out. It's got to be a few years old by now. A few years. Okay. A couple years at least. Maybe like, I feel like it was pandemic time. You know, it was like around, it couldn't have been more than like five years It ago. seems like something that would be created during a pandemic. Yeah, definitely. Everyone's all up on toilets and stuff. <laughs> But anyway, um, I feel like we got distracted from the dog controversy. I wanted to say just really quickly that I think that this artist who's getting dogs to lay down, not abusing them. It's not abuse. They're just laying down. Chill out, everybody. But at the same time, I don't think it's necessarily ethical to use living creatures in your work. Right. Uh, unless Especially you have if it is off. a living head off. in a toilet. Right, right. Don't do that. 
Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know. I, people getting crazy about the dogs going to sleep on a fucking rug. People freaking out about Biden's head popping out of a toilet bowl. Yeah. Abomination. I've seen way worse shit on South Park. Family Guy. You, you ever see Cannibal Holocaust? You want to see an abomination. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll that movie got that. the director arrested. It did. Yeah, they it got arrested because they thought it was real. We live in a very divisive time I right now. I thought it was real when I, I actually saw it. I have another clip from coming to work today. I noticed that they were protesting the fact that the UN held a memorial for the president of Iran who recently died in the helicopter crash. They hmm. just had these big video screens. Look at this. These things are weird. They have these video trucks. I think this is art. I think this is well, not art, but it's like visual propaganda in action, you know, which is very art related. Uh, but it's, they have these two trucks that will just play video screens of whatever the, whoever's renting them, you know, is wants to promote. So right now they're saying like, shame on you for, you know, having the memorial for the Iranian president. He was the butcher of Tehran. Um, and you know, we're artists. I don't have very strong political, uh, opinions right. on that one way or the other. The, the UN seems to be always in a difficult spot. It's I think like, they should be using those screens to show Cannibal Holocaust instead of... Yeah, <laughs> just a know. screening of Cannibal Holocaust. I think they'd all get down with it. Yeah, they'd probably say that it was something happening now. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, it's Thank about that you, time. Thank you, Yeah, it's about <laughs> that time where we got a couple extra segments coming up for you today. <gasps> it's the day of the week. I mean, the day of the month, the month of the year. It's a holiday time. What holiday it is. is it? There's a few weird ones today. Yeah. We can learn about composting day. Very exciting. <laughs> Anyways, wait. I got also... a funny. I got a funny composting story from Brooklyn. Oh um, yeah. I had this friend, uh, a neighbor, and roommate, Thompson Crozier. Hey, what's up? And he, he would, um, he would like. He got really into composting and like community gardening. That's cute. Really cute. But what he would do is he would like go to the grocery store and buy a bunch of vegetables. And then, like, not eat them and, like, let them rot. And then he would take the rotting vegetables he got at the grocery store and go to the community garden to plant them, to use his fertilizer on his tomato plants. You know what I think? So after about 60, after about $60 worth of groceries and, like, three weeks, he comes out with, like, this little tomato plant. So I'm like, look there what I grew. Be, and I was like, dude, just an, buy tomato. There should be an island uh -huh. Where all the idiots go, they should just round uh -huh. up all the fucking idiots <laughs> and throw them at. at in I this think island. that's called Australia. Sorry, Australia. I've that's heard about was. that. I've that heard, was the criminal. No, they're for real. No, they need a idiot island. It's called idiot <laughs> it's island. It's called Manhattan, bro. We're already on <laughs> oh, it. Oh fuck! You might be right. <laughs> like yesterday again. I know I bring up walking, but like, why are you sitting at the bottom of the steps in the subway, bro? You're blocking people coming down. Like, I'm trying to get to the fucking six train, and you're playing with your piddle work. I know. Worth. You've, you've mentioned this before, and it is one of those irritable things that just keeps happening so much that just builds up like a hatred inside I of you. I can't take it. You I gotta let it go. Take, take it. all that stress and hatred and release it. Put it in a little ball and. I'll make a sack let of compost go. and drop it on their lap. <laughs> I don't care. Well, my favorite day, Jeez. I think that today's favorite day is. Um, Put, you put a pillow on your fridge day? Yeah, I don't know. Let's see what the it says. What the hell is that? It's stupid. Please, everybody, so put stupid. a pillow on your fridge. Take some photos. Make some art about your Put pillows. a pillow on your fridge day is meant to bring you prosperity and good fortune. Oh, my gosh. It also means you should go to Idiot Island, <laughs> where the idiots put their fucking pillows on, on fridges. I remember... I was going to say <laughs> that it's probably some, like, you know, honored cultural tradition somewhere, but then I remembered refrigerators are fairly new. It can't be that right. much of a cultural well, I tradition. remember, remember Rescue 911, that yeah. show? Yeah, 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 I remember there was this one episode where this kid like licked ice in his freezer and his tongue got stuck Ooh. to the freezer and he was just able to reach for the phone and they actually had like the phone call. It's like, help, my tongue is stuck to the freezer. And they're like, what, mm. sir? Like, my tongue is stuck to the fever. Can you reach a glass of hot water? <laughs> Man, that was... That well, that's, that is that nothing on the kid who cemented his head in a microwave. Remember this? Uh, what? Yeah, this kid in like... I think it was in Vegas or something. It was a social media stunt. He was trying to get some views, trying to do it for the gram. And, and he literally poured... He put his head into... Like, cut a hole in his head. Like, stuck his head in a microwave and poured quick greet into it and let it set. So and then he died. He did not die somehow. I Whoa. guess they had like breathing tubes in there or something. 
Idiot Island. <laughs> Send them to Idiot Island. Fuck this shit. I'm but tired they, of this. But they they had to the, the the fire department had to come and like use the jaws of life and like chisel him out of it. It was pretty uh pretty up there. It was yeah. like worse than Gorilla Glue hair girl because I could understand getting your hair but, but that's supplies so, mixed up. I mean, there's no excuse for this stupidity. To, I can't even say stupidity. I can't. I, I'm just so enraged. Did you hear my knuckle? Like, what if I told you, oh Morgan, God. that if I cemented your head into a microwave, we would get a million subscribers here on YouTube? I wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do There's it? There's other things I, I do that him. are less. Stu- no, I wouldn't cement my head. No fucking way. No. no. Okay. No. I'm glad. I'm glad. No. Good to see you have some standards, dude. Yeah, but there are other things. Well, we won't get into that. But anyways, all I'm saying is... <laughs> any cement- art news on your end? Like, what are you doing with uh, any shows coming up here? Um, No. I've been we putting all my up. love into this show. You guys got to support us through Patreon. So, That's true. We've been putting so a lot of effort in here. <laughs> Follow, subscribe, like, and subscribe. We love you so much. Thank you for watching. We Bye, do have a good Prince. show coming up, though. Conscious Dust. Kathleen Crowlick. Oh, go yes. check out the That's Solace be an calendar. Awesome show. I was She's um, amazing. Putting this... her uh, work together for the Priceless and piece mm. after piece, I was like, like man, damn. this is awesome. The colors, just the shape, everything has, has such a cool, uh, unique look to it. So if you want to see some amazing artwork, and she's also a really good tattoo artist. Yeah, get a tattoo by um, Kathleen. So definitely look at the Solace calendar, see really what cool uh, events are coming up, uh, because that's a show to look out for. Yeah, and she's a really cool person, too. I really like her. She's very yeah. nice, uh, very funny. And also follow Sola Studio NYC. Um, You can also see all the events uh, through that as well. You could check out a lot of the work that's produced from by the artists of Sola. So yeah, it's groovy, man. It's groovy. And if you're an artist in New York, check us out. Come show with us. Come be a part of the group. It's uh, it's really artist forward. We're really focused on working hard for you guys and not just taking your money for nothing. We don't ever charge to show uh, and we always do shows every quarter. We do. And solo shows. Speaking of show, it's time for show and tell. Oh my God! You've brought a oh mystery boy. So box. So I have my mystery box here. There's a new segment called Morgan's Full Mystery Box. Let's see what we got. Here. What do we got? Morgan's Mystery shape. Box. Let's you have to see. close your eyes when you when you pull something out of there. That's all going to be disturbing, anyways. I got letters from ex-girlfriends, which I should probably read before <laughs> I read them here. Who Jeez, dude, from? I didn't know you're going to pull out letters from exes on the show. It's, you, know, you don't need so to air many. that public publicly. Put so your dirty many. laundry back in that oh box. Oh my God! So this is a good one. Okay, let's see it. All right. So we'll put this it on is the a gr- picture. We'll put it up on the screen, but this is a picture. We'll have to put it up on the screen yeah. right here. It's a Polaroid of me, this kid Shane, and I, I hate to say it, but I forgot the, the girl's name now, which is funny because I had a crush on her. So what happened was in seventh grade, I did the whole like I was like, hey, like I don't know, you want to go on a date? And uh, she was like, no, sorry, I really like you as a friend. But what was so sad is that she took Shane to the dance, but they wanted to squeeze me into the picture to make me feel good so I wouldn't kill myself. <laughs> that's so and, sweet. Uh, so that's the picture of me at the school dance. Bro, I think it was probably like she, eighth grade dance. She looks exactly like you. No, she doesn't. She's Italian. They look the same. It's the same picture. Just put you in a wig and a little dress, and then you look identical in that photo. That is a little bit weird. <laughs> I think you're a narcissist, bro. You're like trying to trying to date yourself here. She's Italian. Okay. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I actually am so. guilty of that too. Here's a picture of uh, me and my ex Jamie, who I moved to New York with. Tell us we're not. Tell me we're not identical. We look the same. Actually, people at our parties would think that we were oh, brother and Carolyn. sister. Carolyn. Sorry, her name was Carolyn. It says it right there. Oh, Sorry. you should have just pretended you were. Ninety three. Nineteen ninety three. Dang. I was like four foot one. I weigh 10 pounds. Yeah. All right. Is it time for another? You got yeah, something else I in there? Actually, there's a lot of shit in here. <laughs> Let's see what Morgan's else I got. Morgan's Mystery here. Box. We're going through your memories. Um, uh, let's see. So. What's this? Oh, this man. Cool. Report card. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, a report card. Let's see how bad this of a student sad. you were. This is fucking sad. Oh, my god. And let me just say, I, I have ADHD, and it was really hard for me at school. It really was. Like, paying attention and taking notes. I was uh, on a lot of Ritalin. So let's see. This is 95. I went to Monroe Woodbury High School. Mm-hmm. Um, P.E. I had gym in the morning. That's good. Get your blood Oh, moving. no, no, no. Actually, this is not... 
This is not my my uh, report card. You Although, stole somebody's report card. It's this is my class list: study hall, oh. core three, general chemistry, lunch first semester. That was huge. Animation study hall. Yeah, I know I have one, but I mean I'll get to that soon. Oh yeah, so right here, this is interesting. It's this cool is looking. when I used to do events mm -hmm. um, at Alex Gray's place. I forgot what it oh, was really? called. Alex Gray's got a uh, like a compound up nor up state, and it Cosm. is called Cosm. Yeah. Yes, Cosm Gallery. Chapel Le of Sacred Mirrors That's is an right. acronym, and that uh, used to be in uh, Manhattan. Yeah, no, uh, 542 West 27th Street. Oh, so that's this is from when it was still in Manhattan. Yeah, um, this is 2007, give me, give me. and basically what they would do is they had Burning Angel Girls as live nude models, and I would make these collage books uh, that are also used as sketchbooks, oh. so I would hand make them and sell them here at this particular event. Sketch live porn stars all night. Admission $10 includes wine. Adult XXX drawing. Yeah, that was fun. That was with Did you the, put this on or you just go No, to this? this is put on by a very interesting crew actually. Uh triplets, the Zopa brothers, Z O P P A. Um now, and they're they're a cool crew. Uh Alex is in California and his other two brothers, Andrew and Zach, are here in New York City. I have not spoken to them in a long time, but I should reach out to them. They are very interesting people. Scandalous poses. Very Guest scandalous. DJs, contest and giveaway, live action painting. This is funny because as somebody who's like run like more, um, I don't know, I don't want to say like serious, but more um, academic life drawing sessions. Right, right. There's always that one dude who's just there to like perv out and his like drawings are really terrible. You know, and you like look oh, over yeah. and it's just like, he's just like locked in the whole time. He's drooling all over drooling the Drooling and just yeah. like, oh, it's gross, dude. Look I at wish, that I wish this toe. still existed so you could just send them there. I would send them all here. I'd be like, don't don't come here anymore. Go to this. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I would do. Oh, cool. I got Because they seem to be leaning into it. I got a Jimmy Dean Barry Bonds baseball card. Check that out. I wonder if it's worth anything. Remember when he did steroids and his head grew like wow. five times the size? Wait, we do it. Let's do a live. That was for, cute. Uh, tell me more about him while I do a live uh, price check for you. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. He, I mean, it was so obvious. He also broke um, the record for most home runs, but I mean... I think that ball that was the the ball that was broke the record was bought by Mark Echo. Who's Mark Echo? Of the uh, the fashion designer mm. Echo, um, and I think he did a vote. Whatever got most votes went Ooh. won. You are in, you are loaded now, buddy. Shut up. Two dollars thirty six cents. Oh shit! Hell yeah! Oh shit! Nineteen ninety two. Yeah, I, I think what happened was they, they stamped an asterisk on the baseball yeah. because of him being on steroids. So although he did break the baseball home run record. Yeah, well, if you he, like sports, follow Morgan because I hate on. sports. I'm leaving now because you're talking about sports. I'm hey, just kidding. It's hey, about time. Oh. It's uh, about time. We, we got to get going. Okay, we'll talk about more strange stuff We can look into time. your oh, mystery box again This next is just time. one box, by the way. There's more mystery boxes. <laughs> All right. Very good. Uh, uh, we have some exciting news, though, right? We've got some guests coming up. Stay tuned. Follow, subscribe. We have uh, next week. Cross your fingers. Week, Who do we have Friday? Don't we have a show? Don't yeah, we, we have a show. Of course we have a show. We have a show every Friday. But I'm talking about the following Friday because we have a very <gasps> special guest potentially. Oh, yes. Swoon. We have Swoon coming on. I'm excited. If you're in New York and you're in street art scene, you know who Swoon is. Uh, and we're really excited to talk to her and my friend Mariah. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. And we hope to see you guys next time. Open up your ears now. Lucky time explosion. Tune in for the the crazy motion surprise in every second laughs and mystery skip the dull and boring join our energy lucky time explosion join the
Explosion. 